From Dunkirk to Inishirin to Gotham City and beyond, Barry Keoghan seems to have done it all. But what don't you know about this phenomenal Irish actor? Barry Keoghan had something of a rocky childhood. From an early age, he was exposed to the harsh realities of Dublin's drug problem. And sadly, when he was only 12 years old, his mother Debbie died of a heroin overdose. He later told the Irish Times, Back then, when heroin caught a lot of families, it was worse. It was a new drug, it was a new thing, and people didn't know the effects. In the early years of his career, Barry shied away from discussing his family history. In a 2018 interview with ID, however, he shared a few details about his past, acknowledging that where he comes from is an important part of his trajectory. Keoghan explained, I come from a different world. Her death shaped who I am, definitely. And though her death occurred before his acting career took off, Keoghan still feels her presence, even if he can't celebrate his biggest accomplishments with her. As he said on the TV show Living with Lucy, I believe she's here with me through this journey, the good times and the bad. Dealing with this loss so early in his life also influenced the types of characters he seeks to play. Keoghan told The Independent, Like every actor, I want to express my pain. I want to play someone with a bit more of an edge, someone who challenges people and that doesn't have it all easy. The reality of his mother's addiction meant that there were times when she was sick and couldn't care for Barry and his brother Eric. With no father in the picture, the two boys ended up spending seven years in 13 different foster homes before their mother's death. Barry recalled the foster families being kind to him and his brother, but every time the boys got attached, they would be moved on. Two years before Debbie's death, Barry and Eric found a permanent home when they moved in with their maternal grandmother. Unfortunately, they were mostly estranged from their mother by the end of her life. The actor opened up to The Guardian about how it was a horrific time for them when she died, noting that he and Eric only got through it because they had each other. He explained, My mother dying of drugs is not easy for any kid. Anyone dying is not easy, but certainly not a mother. Me and my brother, we stuck together. Barry and Eric's bond has remained strong over the years, and the actor often praises his brother for being his biggest supporter. Barry Keoghan began his amateur boxing career back in high school, and it's something he has continued to be passionate about. It's brilliant for the mental health, and, um, you know, I, I, I train a lot for that reason. While the actor noted that boxing helps him look and feel good in his everyday life, it's also a particularly valuable form of training when he's trying to get into shape for film roles. Since he has become a successful actor, Keoghan and his childhood pal, boxing Olympic gold medalist Kelly Harrington, decided to give back to the place they grew up. So they began a boxing and drama program for inner-city kids in Dublin. Having grown up in the innermost district of Ireland's capital, Keoghan says he can relate to the next generation and claims he wants to do his bit to spur them forward, giving them some hope for their futures. Barry Keoghan's first acting credit was in the gangster film Between the Canals, which was written and directed by the award-winning Irish filmmaker Mark O'Connor. However, Keoghan wasn't actively pursuing auditions when he stumbled across the open call for actors. As he told ID, I saw it in a window, an open invitation, street cast, and I saw there was time off school. It was a small movie, but I was like, I can do this. Prior to Between the Canals, Keoghan's acting experience was pretty limited, having acted only in a few Christmas plays at school. However, he took the audition seriously and scored the role after his first meeting with O'Connor. Having found that he wanted to pursue acting, Barry Keoghan decided formal education wasn't for him. In the UK and Ireland, kids attend high school from the age of 11 until 16 before moving on to college or employment. He opted to finish his education at 16, a move which he later told Dazed was pretty typical for kids growing up in Dublin's inner city, regardless of their career aspirations. What wasn't typical, or so he felt at the time, was Keoghan's desire to become a professional actor. Many of his friends made fun of him for it. Thankfully, his brother Eric was always on hand to offer his support. In an interview with The Guardian, Keoghan said, He never took the piss out of me. Once you get the seal of approval from your brother, you just know. Keoghan found swift success after starring in Between the Canals when the director, Mark O'Connor, cast him in 2012's Stalker. He then bagged a series of small parts in Irish productions before moving on to bigger Hollywood roles. But this on-the-job training wasn't the only thing that prepared him for his high-flying career, as Keoghan made the unexpected decision to return to school. He was one of the first students to attend the National Screen Acting School of Ireland in Dublin. The school is better known as the Bow Street Academy, and it has since become renowned as one of Ireland's finest acting institutions. 
Speaking to The Ringer in 2017, a few months after the release of Dunkirk, Barry Keoghan said, I always said, I want to work with good indie filmmakers, and if a blockbuster comes up and the filmmaker is great, I'll do that. And then I get the best of all that. It's Chris Nolan, the best director who also makes big films. In Christopher Nolan's critically acclaimed war film, Keoghan played a good-hearted young stowaway named George, who stows away aboard a boat headed for Dunkirk. George is undoubtedly one of the bravest civilian heroes in the film, and his tragic fate hits all the harder thanks to Keoghan's acting chops. I told my dad I'm I've done nothing that's cool. But now I would do something one day. Dunkirk was one of Keoghan's breakout roles, just as it was for many of the younger actors in the cast. Writer-director Christopher Nolan had wanted to bring in relatively unknown performers for the film, which meant that he cast the net wide during the audition process. As such, all Keoghan had to do was send in a self-tape. And while his part as George landed Keoghan with some valuable experience in a Hollywood blockbuster, it was his other major 2017 role that truly cemented his reputation as one of Ireland's most exciting young actors. In 2017, Keoghan also took on a lead role in Yorgos Lanthimos's terrifying thriller The Killing of a Sacred Deer. The part, which saw him playing a certified psychopath, couldn't have been further from the character he played in Dunkirk, but it was the perfect opportunity for Keoghan to show off his range. In an interview with The Ringer, he explained, I want people to go, f that's him? He's completely different. Playing a completely different type of character wasn't the only appeal of this project, however. Keoghan also explained to Dazed that he learned so much from Yorgos Lanthimos' direction. He said, It was very, very refreshing to go into a movie and not have this whole backstory. Yorgos was like, know your lines and don't attach emotion to them. That said, Keoghan told Vulture that the experience of working with Lanthimos and Christopher Nolan was pretty similar, even though the end results were very, very different. And for his next role, Keoghan was about to take on yet another kind of character, one who would bring him a great deal of success come awards season. Barry Keoghan won a few smaller independent awards early in his career, most notably winning Best Actor in a Supporting Role at the Irish Film and Television Awards for his role in The Killing of a Sacred Deer. But the Banshees of Inishirin took him to another level. His performance as Dominic in the 2022 Irish tragic comedy landed Keoghan an Academy Award nomination for Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role and a BAFTA win in the same category. Uh, there goes that dream. The movie didn't just mark Keoghan's first major critical success, either. This was also the time when he became known for pushing boundaries with each role he chose. Afterward, he told Vanity Fair, I do look at the roles I play and how I can challenge myself in every role, and I do want people to see range and that I can go through other places, rather than the sinister parts that I've played before. When it came to playing Dominic, Keoghan said the role gave him the opportunity to play a layered character. He explained, This was a chance to show that I can come across sinister with a bit of naivete, with a bit of pure soul and honesty. I really did want to push it and bring people into that world of I can make you feel as well, rather than make you hate me and be sinister with an absolute evil demeanor. Production on The Banshees of Inishirin didn't come without its complications. Right before filming was about to begin, Barry Keoghan contracted necrotizing fasciitis, which is better known as the flesh-eating disease. The infection progressed quickly, and Keoghan was hospitalized. He didn't reveal how he contracted the deadly disease, which was concentrated in one of his arms, but Keoghan recalled to GQ that there was a serious discussion about having to amputate it. The situation got worse before it got better, and Keoghan recalled asking the doctors whether he was going to die. Their response? They said they just didn't know. Writer-director Martin McDonough visited the actor in the hospital. He later told GQ that Keoghan had downplayed the situation despite being on a lot of medication. McDonough recalled, We were only about four days out from shooting, and his arm was puffed up. But he was like, yeah, no, I'm going to be fine. I'll see you on Tuesday. I went to the hospital thinking, Sh is he going to die? Luckily, Keoghan made a recovery and managed to keep a hold of his arm, although he was left with a permanent scar around his right elbow. In the span of 12 months, Barry Keoghan appeared in theaters in both the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DC Universe, most notably playing the Joker in The Batman. He may have only had a brief cameo in the film, but thanks to a five-minute deleted scene released a short while later, fans know what to expect from Keoghan in Matt Reeves' burgeoning Batverse. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha ha! 
When the deleted scene was released, Keoghan wrote on X, formerly Twitter, Honestly, I am stuck for words, but I am very, very blessed to play this role after the amazing, amazing actress before me. Here's my version. Keoghan seemingly manifested his role as the Joker during an interview with Vulture back in 2017. At the time, he proudly stated that he was very much open to diving into Gotham's superhero world, even suggesting that he could play Robin alongside Ben Affleck's Batman. Who could have known he would end up playing such an iconic villain instead? Certainly not Keoghan, as he didn't even audition to play Batman's most notorious adversary. The actor revealed to Esquire that he actually sent in a self-tape hoping to bag the role of the Riddler, a part that ultimately went to Paul Dano. In 2021, Barry Keoghan began publicly dating Alison Sandro, and the pair cemented their relationship status when they made their red carpet debut at the Eternals premiere in October 2021. Then, in March 2022, the couple announced the exciting news that they were expecting a baby boy. Keoghan and Sandro welcomed their son, Brando Keoghan, in August 2022. The actor, who was filming Saltburn at the time, revealed to GQ that he was given the day off to be at the birth. He said, day off and straight on to night shoots and night feedings, boom. It's clear that he's taken to being a dad, too, as he said, You know, it's crazy, but when he looks at you, you feel like the most important person in the world. That's the effect he has on me. He smiles at you, and you're like, wow, you're smiling at me like that? I don't deserve that, but anyways, thanks. And he can't stop enthusing about his little boy either, telling Jacob Elordi that having Brando was his I've made it moment. Yeah, I'm a boy. My baby boy. Oh, you had a baby. Mm -hmm. As of January 2024, Keoghan's relationship status with Sandro is unclear, although the actor has sparked romance rumors with musician-slash-actor Sabrina Carpenter and GQ seemingly confirmed his split with Sandro. Keoghan himself has not confirmed this. When the topic came up, he praised Sandro's efforts as a mother and changed the subject. Keoghan simply said, "...she's done a great job and she's an incredible mother." Barry Keoghan received a life-changing diagnosis of ADHD when he was in his late 20s. In 2022, he told the Mamiya and Me podcast that he found out two years earlier, despite noticing the signs much earlier in his life. He added that the medication is not something he strictly takes every day. Keoghan also believes that having ADHD may have unknowingly pushed him toward his acting career. This is because, while he was easily distracted from or struggled to focus on activities like reading, he found he was able to immerse himself in movies. He apparently loved anything starring Paul Newman, but Cool Hand Luke was his all-time favorite and is the one movie he still re-watches when he's having a hard time. What do you do after you've already made waves in a Batman film and the MCU? You set your sights on playing 007, of course. Bond. James Bond. With speculation mounting over which actor will have the honor of playing James Bond after Daniel Craig, Barry Keoghan has decided to throw his hat in the ring. It all began with some pictures Keoghan posted on social media. In the three shots, Keoghan can be seen enjoying a holiday vacation in remarkably Bond-esque style, but it was the caption, Bond Who?, which sparked the question of whether Keoghan was keen to step into the British spy's shoes. He later addressed the photos and speculation on the Ryan Tubridy show, Oh uh, look, I was having a bit of crack. You know, you just throw your hat in the ring for it and see what happens. That said, Keoghan didn't entirely dismiss the prospect of appearing in a James Bond movie, but I am curious to see where they go with Bond, even to play the villain. That would be quite cool, but maybe Bond actually, you know what, maybe Bond. If you didn't know Barry Keoghan's name before Saltburn, you'll definitely know it now. Signing on to the project was clearly the right move for Keoghan, who was sold on playing Oliver Quick before he even read the script. Although writer-director Emerald Fennell initially pictured Timothy Chalamet in the role, with some encouragement from Jacob Elordi, she reached out to Keoghan instead. He knew instantly that he wanted to be a part of the project and admitted to Elordi that he was a part of the reason during their conversation for Vogue. Emerald, yourself, and the script. When he finally did read the script, Keoghan was over the moon. In another interview with Vogue, Keoghan explained, "...when I was reading that, it was a realization of, I've probably signed on to one of the best things I've ever signed on to. It was jaw-dropping. It was beautiful. There's so much stuff there that I had to read over again. I was just like, this is a proper showcase for an actor." Keoghan, who described himself as a method actor, said he was completely immersed in the character of Oliver, and this helped him film some of the more difficult scenes in the movie, as he truly felt like he was going through the same emotions. He explained, I wanted to go on that journey as well. I wanted to see what the next step was." Barry Keoghan plans to have a very long and successful career in the entertainment industry. He explained to Dazed that he believes in part that his success thus far is thanks to the law of attraction. This is something he admittedly puts a lot of stock into, having watched a documentary and read a bit about it. 
Keoghan has been manifesting his acting career goals since before he signed with his agents, and holds his filmography as proof that his plan is coming together. When he has a goal to achieve, he goes after it, and to be fair to him, he has already achieved a substantial amount. So how exactly does he do it? Well, it's pretty simple. He sends his goals out into the universe by putting them on paper. Keoghan explained to The Ringer, I write everything down, directors, movies I want to do, that I want to produce, direct, start my own company, start my own boxing club. While he has already ticked off some pretty big names, such as Christopher Nolan, Chloe Zhao, Matt Reeves, and Yorgos Lanthimos, Keoghan still has a few on his list. Chief among these, Greta Gerwig and Steven Spielberg. As he looks toward the future, Keoghan is continuing to focus his energy on the law of attraction. And if his success so far is any indication, he's probably going to be pretty busy.